solutions for two of those last problems that we did. Um, the first is square root of 112. We're going to simplify it as much as possible. Again, first go through and see is 112 on your list of perfect squares. It is not. It ends up being right between 100 and 121. So I'm going to put my little arrow down here at 100. I'm going to see which of those numbers, 181, 64, 49, 36, 25, 16, 9, and 4, which is the biggest that could be divided into 112. So I'm going to show some work down here. I'm going to take 112. I'm going to divide by 100. When I do this division, I don't get a whole number. So I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to do 112 divided by 81. Again, I don't get a whole number, so I'm going to cross that one off. I'm going to check 112 divided by 64. Again, when I do this division, I get a decimal number. I don't get a whole number, so keep on going. I'm going to check 49 next. Again, this one does not work. 49 is not a factor. So I'm going to go over to 36. So 112 divided by 36. Again, I do not get a whole number. I get a decimal number, so that's not a factor. Check 25 now. Again, this one is a decimal number, so it's not a factor. Then I'm going to check 16. When I divide 112 by 16, I get 7. Therefore, I'm going to use 16. Put a little marker over here. So I'm going to factor 112 as 16 times 7. So 112 is 16 times 7. Now I'm going to use my product property for a square root. And we're going to write this as two square roots. The square root of 16 times the square root of 7. From here, I'm going to evaluate the square root of 16. I know the square root of 16 is 4, because 4 times 4 is 16, so I'm going to rewrite this as 4, and I'm going to bring down my square root of 7. And then my last step, I'm just going to remove this multiplication symbol, so my answer is 4 times the square root of 7. And here is my final answer for this one. Okay, and I'll go over the solution to this one as well, the square root of 675. Now, this is a rather large number. We're all the way here between 625 and 676. Now, some of you might be thinking it ends with a 75. So, you know we should be looking for perfect squares that have factors of 25 of that form. When you look at this chart, we have 625, we have 225, and 25. So I'm going to actually focus on those because it makes sense of this problem. I and mean, if you, you could go through and divide each of those into it, but it would take you a while to get there. So I'm going to start at 675. I'm going to divide it by 625. That obviously doesn't work. It doesn't divide into it a whole number of times. So then I'm going to move on to 225. 675 divided by 225. And you get 3. So that one actually works. So I'm going to factor 675 as 225 times 3. So I'm going to rewrite it up at the top. The square root of 225 times 3. Now I'm going to use that product property for square roots. And I'm going to just separate this as the square root of 225 times the square root of 3. Now I'm going to take and evaluate this perfect square, the square root of 225, if you go over here and look at our chart, that's 15 squared. 15 squared is 225, so the square root of 225 is 15. I'm going to just bring down my times square root of 3, and then I'm just going to remove that multiplication symbol because we don't need to show it. So your answer is 15 square root of 3.